Thank you, the Deputy Speaker. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of our Defense Forces, Prime Cabinet Secretary, our resource people led by Mr. Twig from CPA, our majority and minority leaders and your deputies, the distinguished governor for Mombasa County 001, commissioners of the Parliamentary Service Commission uh, from the National Assembly, chairs of various committees and your vice chairs, distinguished honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, we take the opportunity to welcome you to this post-election seminar being held here in our tourist city of Mombasa. This seminar is not just a get-together by members of parliament to engage in a talking shop. It is absolutely critical to fresh men and fresh women in the House. Parliamentarians who have come for the first time will have tremendous opportunities to learn on how to discharge their triple mandate of representation, legislation, and oversight. For the old timers, this may look rhetorical, but for the new members, it is novel. And we come here, Your Excellency, to reaffirm our commitment to our republic, to our democracy, to our constitutionalism, and above all, duty as parliament to understand and appreciate at all times that the centrality of our 2010 constitution are the people of Kenya. And it's the people of Kenya that we all, including yourself, Your Excellency, have taken oath of office to serve. As Parliament, we will play our role. We will pass laws that are pro-people, laws that will enhance the change that we desire and require in the country. As a Parliament, we will help you to ensure that the resources that the people of Kenya place in the hands of the government through taxes are put to good use. And as a parliament, I'll encourage our members to ensure we present the people who elected you individually and collectively with vigor, with confidence, and with utmost effect. Your Excellency, in the last week, there was a minor standoff in this seminar because of the delayed disbursement of CDF. You as truly here came down, met the members, and we discussed very candidly having engaged the executive back in Nairobi and now the matter is behind us. We have a clear roadmap from the executive on how to disburse CDF timely so that members can be able to deal with the situations that require the use of those resources. We equally dealt with the issue of the Affirmative Action Fund for Women called NGAF and also the timely disbursement of those funds. The executive has done its bit last week, but much more will be done, I have no doubt, in ensuring that CDF and GAF are readily available to help the populace. What I want to assure you, honorable members, and this I speak with authority, because we have consulted widely and deeply, is that CDF is here to stay. 
and it's incumbent upon you as members of parliament to engage meaningfully and effectively to ensure that the irritations you keep get getting from vexatious litigants going to court on each and every issue at every twist and turn to frustrate the management of public resources that help the ordinary people must be put to rest by ring-fencing these funds in the Constitution. Because the boggy boy of the litigation is always the constitutionality of the funds. Make them constitutional beyond any reasonable doubt, and the vexatious litigants will be run out of business very quickly. Thirdly, Your Excellency, this seminar is good and rich because for the first timers, they are going to be exposed to a lot of issues on what is expected of them. They have to learn on how to deal with budgets. They have to learn on the limits and extent of their privileges. They have to learn on how to be effective representatives. They have to learn on how to be effective oversighters of the executive. And above all, this is a mold that takes you to be great statesmen and women in our republic. And as I told you last week, noblesse oblige. Nobility carries obligations, nobility carries responsibility. So as members of parliament, we expect nothing less from you but conduct with extreme and absolutely admirable and unimpeachable decorum. Because you represent people, you carry their aspirations. So as your speaker, I want to encourage you, even when you want to actively disagree with an issue, it is demeaning and an affront to the title you carry for you to raise your voice unnecessarily and beyond reasonable, uh, reasonable measure. We can disagree in a very, very soft way. I always say you must choose to engage in megaphone diplomacy and we shout at each other from the top of KICC or we whisper into the right ears to get the right issues done. Both will give you the same effect, but the whispering will give you a better effect. I want to end, Your Excellency, by encouraging your government that these members of parliament are a resource for you. Your agenda will only get effect and meaning when it is turned into legislation. Any regulations from the executive take effect and meaning when they are approved by parliament. And as a parliament, we'll be able to work hand in hand to ensure that the people of Kenya get what they deserve, get what they need, and live an incrementally better life than the time you came into power. We as parliament have a cardinal duty to defend the constitution, to uphold the constitution, and we are going to do so without any fear or favor. Whatever you have sent to us to deal with is already before committees. Honorable members, as I finish, I have taken the extra step recently to put a team together because of the myriad of litigations that face Parliament on the most frivolous issues. I have brought together a team of senior lawyers in the House, Otenda Molo, Peter Kaluma, Murugara, John Makali, Wakili from Katanga, Osoro, and many others. And those who are not in the team, you may volunteer if you wish to join so that you constantly deal with issues as they emerge so that we are not held back 
by decisions of courts because we are not representing ourselves well. We are going to make sure that we give those pro bono services and those members have assured me, Your Excellency, they'll give pro bono services to ensure that they take head on and run out of town vexatious litigants as soon as is practically possible. It is now my humble pleasure, honorable members, and when His Excellency finishes addressing us, we are a bit too many probably to have a group picture. We probably will ask the leadership and our resource people, and of course the Prime Cabinet Secretary and uh, the Governor, to have a photo opportunity with the Head of State. And then His Excellency will join you for lunch. And those of you who have any stick issues, you know the President has been a member of Parliament. He was there before CDF, and he was there during CDF. He knows the difference between the two. So you actually are preaching to the converted. And when you preach to the converted, it may end up uh, spending our time badly because he knows exactly what CDF means. Your Excellency, it is now my humble pleasure to invite you to come and talk to these distinguished members of Parliament of the 13th Parliament. Thank you very much, honorable members. <clears throat> um, Mr. Speaker, sir.